Marissa, on today's episode, why well, you I'm trying, are I was putting your to check phone on our lunch order. <laughs> You're checking our lunch order, and you were also being distracted on your phone. We're actually going to talk about productivity hacks. Oh, I could use some of those. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I asked uh, some of my friends on Facebook. I just decided to say, like, you have what friends? are Ah, followers. Okay. You're right. They're okay. followers. They're, they follow me. Yeah. <laughs> fans. Uh, fans. Ooh, that's, that's pushing it. it. <laughs> uh, no, but these are just some people that, you know, have decided to follow me over the years and friends that uh, I was just like, what are your productivity hacks? You know, we talk about it all yeah. the time, but I'm just always trying to figure out what they are. What are yeah. some new ones? So we're going to talk about some of those fun okay. ones in this episode. I'm excited to learn. Let's do it. Welcome to another episode of Focus on This, the most productive podcast on the internet, so you can banish distractions, get the right stuff done, and finally start loving Mondays. I'm Ken Freda, here with Marissa Hyatt and Nick, Nick, our producer. One day, if I keep coming back, I'll have an actual spot somewhere. <laughs> Maybe this table will be gone. Yeah. And it'll make more sense. We need We're to like, remodel. Right now, I'm hiding in the corner. So, yeah. bye. We're having Still talks about corner. updates. We're having talks about updates. Yes. I saw there was a proposal. This propo- was phase one. Yeah, I saw a thing. You saw a thing. Don't You can't talk about the thing because I haven't read the thing. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't read it either. I, I just it. saw that the there was a thing. It's a thing with numbers. I saw the number and I was happy about the number and I think I could drop the number. That's all that you need to know. Okay. Okay, great. I don't. Great. <laughs> she has cool. no idea numbers what I'm talking cool. about. Let's, let's get to some hacks. Great, all right, great, so great. productivity hacks. We're going to jump right into it. Uh, so the first one that someone said was self-discipline. That's the hack. Be self-disciplined. Well, you don't need to brag. <laughs> I know. Gosh. <laughs> it's, it was David Goggins. He's one of my friends. Yeah. He just like, just stepped in. I'm just kidding. <laughs> self-discipline um, is a little, I mean, is it a hack? Is that a hack? That's all about consistency. That's not a hack. I mean, you can I mean, that's stuff, good. But, yeah. That's good. We need uh, more of that. But Here's a real hack. A uh, good friend of mine, Kimo, said chat GPT. Yeah, this is a really great hack. This has been super helpful if you are in the writing content space, anything. You know what it's great for? Spreadsheet formulas. Ooh. Okay. Okay, I'm, bear, I'm, this is great. I'm bear, now... <laughs> bear with me for a second, okay. okay? Do you remember when you were in school? Yeah. And on your test, there would be like these crazy word problems. Yes. And it's like, you know, Joey has 15 watermelons and... They each contain 25 seeds. You know, he eats seven. How many seeds does he have? Okay. Like some, some crazy thing like that. 365. Is that right? I have no idea. Someone check me on that. I have no clue what (laughs) the answer is. I I, I don't think that's right. I think I'm blown by it. Hey, that is a real life scenario. And I need a formula to figure out what the answer is to put into my spreadsheet. Chad GPT can tell you. There you go. So you can put all kinds of scenarios in. I've been doing this so much lately because I've been living in spreadsheets. Welcome to being a CMO. Congratulations. Exactly. (laughs) And so there's sometimes where I'm like, okay, I know the question I'm trying to ask, but I don't know what the formula would be to get there. Mm. And so I go to Chad GPT and it spits it right out and it explains the whole thing. So it's not just like, here's your formula. It explains, like it shows you their work. And it is so helpful because hmm. you can put in real life scenarios and boom, there you go. And so you don't have to spend forever long trying to figure out what is the formula or you got to do backwards math and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. So one of the ways I love using ChatGPT is just the ideation part yes. of it, right? Like yeah. sometimes you just don't know what to write about or creative. Like we're always producing stuff here. So it's just like, what can we do? Yeah. And I just put it in and it starts giving me ideas. I'm not going to copy and paste yeah. everything mm-hmm. ChatGPT does. It's sometimes a little funky. You know but what, like um, one of our coworkers, one of the things that he does is he actually uses it um, from an emotional standpoint, from like a therapy. And he's like, act like a oh, yeah, know, yeah, licensed yeah. marriage, family and marriage counselor. And here's my scenario. What, you know, advice would you give or what tools Whoa. would you give me to deal with this? And I think this is so, this is such a great hack of like, you're in the moment, you're dealing with the issue. And you can actually use ChatGPT to help you navigate challenges that you're working on, which I would have never thought to use it in that kind of scenario. I would say for people who have not used ChatGPT yet and they hear all these things about right. AI, it can feel so overwhelming. Um, but man, just start. Just, just ask some questions. Ask like some questions. one of the things kind of that fun. I do. What all day the time. will I die? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's not a psychic. <laughs> does not have uh, future reading abilities. But um, I often will use it for marketing stuff, like take this email, 
act like a marketing, you know, expert. expert and optimize it for open rates or click rates or whatever it is mm. that I'm trying to optimize it for. Um, or take this thing and shorten it and make it as clear or hit these pain points. Like there's so much that you can do no matter what field you're in. Definitely. You can even Google or ask chat GPT, what prompts should I prompt you with? If this is what I'm trying to accomplish yeah. and it will spit out. Exactly. It'll tell you what to tell it. Yeah. Another fun one, just for, as we're talking about productivity hacks with chat GPT is like, if you don't know what to create for meals, right? It can make a whole yeah. meal plan for you. Yes, and like it can. Specific. With recipes, with, with recipe. dietary restrictions, yes, it's awesome. with specific Wait. goals in mind. Did I tell you guys the story about the, did I tell you the story no. about the time one time? So Ashley and I were doing meal planning, blah, blah, blah. And you know, sometimes you're like out and you're like, I was out and about and yeah. I was like, I'm going to get the thing. And at some point while I was in my office, she sent me a list of ingredients and I was like, okay. So when I was out, I just got the ingredients and I'm like picking them up and I'm like, this is really weird like like numbers and I mean, we never bought this before like, what is this so i get home i unpack or whatever and then like the next day she, i was like oh i got i went to the store i got the stuff so the next day she's like looking at what we're having that week and she's like what did you get i was like i got the list of things that you sent she's like no i was just sending you to show you that chat gpt could do this <laughs> oh my gosh so but what it was having us make were like nonsense it was oh like take the rice and turn it into a sandwich and do it <laughs> so you can tune it but so we had like a week of chat gpt foods that we had not at all that would be a fun challenge to do like one week of a chat gpt meal plan do it Whoa. do it on this show that. that is actually that is actually a good <laughs> hack if you do have health goals like i've gone in and i'll put in a specific like let's just pretend you're doing whole 30 yeah. you can be like give me a whole 30 meal plan you know, that primarily includes chicken, zucchini, mm -hmm. and whatever, uh, for at least two of the meals that doesn't have this in it, that only, you know, I mean, you can get so granular, you know, that it's X amount of calories or optimized for this or whatever, and it will spit you out a whole thing, breakfast, lunch, and dinner with recipes. You can even be like, use primarily this blog's recipes. Ooh, that's a good like, I like mm. half-baked harvest is one of my favorites, and I've, done that and it's crazy what it comes back with so productivity uh, act number one product, yeah. <laughs> we got 50 more to go yeah. I'm just yeah. <laughs> the next one staying off facebook or social media yeah this is rough it's so hard but it's probably one of the honestly the best productivity hacks you can have yes is how much time you waste on social media it is so true we've talked about it a lot here on this podcast but just take them off your phone if you need to. Yeah, or set your screen time, you know, limits to be yep. you can only do it certain times of the day or for a certain amount each day. You can also use there's an app that I cannot think of for your actual computer that will block you out of sites like Facebook. Cold Turkey. Is, is that what it's called? Yeah. Also, okay. Opal, which I use on my phone, has a desktop version okay. of that as well. So it's all like integrated Ooh. together. Yeah, but you can definitely, it's easy to get lost yeah. in the apps, for sure. Okay, here's another one. I haven't read this, so I'm reading it for the first time. <laughs> Matthew says, starting badly. I get much Ooh. more done when I let myself get the experience of starting than I ever do over planning to the point of inertia. Hmm. I kind of think that's interesting. Yeah. Like, just, just the point is just start, no matter how bad it is, just go for something and then get in motion. For sure. Yeah. I, I mean, I would say I'm the person that likes to over plan. Totally. I'm, I'm like thinking about like 10 scenarios deep. I'm like in inception yeah. at that point. It's like, no, just go. Just make it happen. Like, at some point, you got to start. You just got to start. So that is a fantastic product yeah. you have. Uh, I used to have some uh, a mentor of mine who said 50% today is better than 100% tomorrow. Mm. Oh, you know, so that's just a good one. Like, just keep say that again. 50% today is a hundred is better than a hundred percent tomorrow. I'm going to put my hand in the shot <laughs> that right there. That's it. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> um, I'm sure he got it from somewhere else, but that, that was great. <laughs> Another okay. one. Well, this it. one is similar. Seth says publishing. One thing my dad says is people don't care about your work until you publish it. It'll be hard to get editors or collaborators collaborators while you're working on something, but once you publish it, critics will find their way into the comment section. If you need help on a project, just publish it as if it is a finished product. Mm. You'll get all kinds of free help. <laughs> Dude, when he wrote that, that I was terrifying. like, I love it. I was like, he's so right. I was but like, let's so just true. see. 
Like, does it ring true? Does it not ring true? Do you have people who love it? Well, and this, honestly, you know, we've done a lot of this uh, within our marketing where we'll send emails and sometimes it land and sometimes it doesn't land. And so it's like, okay, that didn't quite land. We didn't get the open rate. So we need to adjust this or that, you know, and it's helpful to get that feedback versus trying to get everything perfect. The truth is you won't be able to. This is a great productivity hack that several people, CJ and, and a few others have mentioned, was using a timer. Yeah. And a lot of people used to talk about using a physical timer. And there's to- some sophisticated ones out there. Oh, like yeah. There's one that's a cube. Have you seen this one? No. That like you, it's basically like you rotate it. And so it'll give you like different times, but it, um, I think it's maybe connected to the Pomodoro method, yeah. but it's pretty cool. That's awesome. Yeah. I need to check it so out. So people keep it on their desk and then, you know, it goes yeah. off. Or and the whole point is you're just trying to beat the clock. Yeah. Right. Like you just, you need some sort of competition. Yes. And so many emails. I do that primarily if I'm trying to knock out my inbox, I'll just set a timer and just knock out as many emails as I can. And then after that, it, it is what it is. Yeah. Sweet. So. Okay. Another productivity hack is listening to certain types of music, right? So someone talked about yes. trap music. Okay. Well, that <laughs> is not on my focus playlist, <laughs> but I will say that this to me is a huge hack and this is something that I do. I am the kind of person that I listen to music. I would say like probably 60% of my waking hours I'm listening to music. Yeah. Like it's, it's pretty much all the time I'm mm-hmm. listening to music um it's true she will send like audio notes and there's like music in the background i always have music on at my house like if i'm working from home i have something on my mom if you look at her spotify gail bruce hyatt is her name on spotify g-a-i-l and she has phenomenal focus playlist she Mm -hmm. has one that's like soundtrack she has one that's classical she has one that's like folk but no like instrumental no vocals she has like all different kinds. Hers are great. And then Spotify has amazing playlists. Oh, yeah. So that's a great we, hack. Uh, here at Full Focus, there's a, several of us that are sharing like YouTube uh, playlists, yeah. videos that we're just like, hey, we found another sound, uh, sound bite or not. Sorry, not sound bite, but like a soundtrack yeah. that we just listen to while we're in it, you it know? It's the best. I've actually thought about us creating like Full Focus doing our own playlist mm. for focus. So mm. if you want that, tell me in the community because <laughs> we'll do it. We'll do it. Yeah. I'll recruit my mom. I, I like you. Yeah, exactly. I like when I'm writing stuff, um, like emails and stuff, I would listen to classical music. Yeah. Um, but when I'm writing a speech or, you know, doing any public speaking, I will always have epic soundtrack music on totally. in the background. That's a good, yeah. Because of the way the music flows, it has like the lows and the highs, yeah. the anticipation. You like feel the I'm emotion. I'm feeling the emotion and I'm actually trying to follow that same cadence as I'm writing well, something. And it, this is a like a great an, hack. If this you is a really good speeches. hack is like match the energy that you're trying to put out. So I have, there's a band um, called Tycho, T-Y-C-H-O, that is mostly like, I would say 90% of their music is instrumental. Occasionally they do like collaborations with artists who sing on their tracks but it's energetic and so it's not it's not like trap music okay yeah. it's not like it's still like <laughs> chill but it's inner it has a little bit of energy behind it and so if i'm like okay i really gotta like dig deep today it is my favorite thing to put on because i stay engaged i don't get tired listening to it like i feel motivated and energized yeah, yeah. i used to do gladiator for years the gladiator oh, soundtrack was yeah, my jam Hans zimmer right oh yeah, yeah. Hans no. zimmer was my jam uh okay let's do a few more uh someone wrote i don't believe in productivity hacks yeah who was uh bradley Bradley. we're gonna call you out bradley (laughs) i mean he says this is just a buzzword with little or no value just get the work done well bradley easy for you to say (laughs) (laughs) sometimes you do need i mean first of all he has a point of like you gotta just get get your stuff done you know like don't just procrastinate and try to think of what hacks you can do and all that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, most of us have too much stuff to actually do. And so we do need hacks to knock it out. And this is where I do think the full focus planner is huge because it helps you figure out what are the three things that are the most important to accomplish today. And if that's all you get done, it's a successful day. Yeah. And I would also say that like, there's a lot of people who are like, well, just get, get it done. And I'm all for get it done. But a lot of times you're not being the most efficient. Yeah. 
or effective with your time. Right. So when I think of a productivity hack, it's actually like, how can I actually get something done faster and yeah. better? Well, and the know? truth is productivity, like who cares about productivity? It's not about just getting more done. Yeah. It's really about like, are you doing the right things today that you need to do to drive, you know, home on your goals or whatever projects you're working on. And I think to me, this is the ultimate productivity hack is asking yourself, like, is this task that's in front of me truly relevant to what I'm trying to accomplish? Because there are so many things that all of us could get lost in on a oh, daily yeah. basis that sure our task and they probably need to get done at some point, but they are not actually moving the needle on our goals. And so I, I really think the full focus system, how we help you identify those three things every single day and every single week that are going to actually help you go down the field, you know, faster, better, and more efficiently than you would have otherwise. Yeah. So daily big three is the ultimate productivity app. And Joel mentioned it and on Joel, it too. <laughs> you get the gold star. <laughs> right. The last one that we'll just mention is delegation. Yeah. Someone said delegate, delegate, delegate. Okay, so can we talk about this, though? Because yeah. a lot of people d can't delegate. Yeah, they're horrible at delegating. Or what do you mean? No, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, some people just aren't good at delegating. They don't know how. But often, there's a lot of people that they're like, I don't have somebody to de delegate to. Mm. Mm. So what happens then? Go find someone to delegate it to. Well, here's what I would say, is there are Hire a lot someone. of things that you can delegate. First of all, like, chat GPT, you can delegate a lot of stuff to, and yeah. it'll spit it right back out at you. One of the things that I delegate often is grocery shopping. <laughs> That's something that takes a lot of time. Like it usually yes. is like at least one hour, if not more. And I don't know, I guess it was mostly in 2020. I started using instant cart, Instacart yeah. and I fell in love with it. And sure I pay more for mm -hmm. them to go shop for me and I don't always get the perfect stuff. And what, you know, sometimes it's not, perfect but the amount of time it saves me like i can on a sunday let's say if i'm put an instacart order in i'm able to stay home and clean my house while they're shopping yeah or i'm able to you know do my weekly preview or whatever else i need to do on a sunday fold laundry that you know if i had to go to the grocery store it's going to shorten my time at home to be able to do those things so that's a great way if you maybe you don't have a personal assistant or a team or anything there's great options to delegate outside of just a team or an yeah. assistant you know people forget you could have someone do your laundry too this is actually a thing i kind of like doing laundry although it is time consuming so it's it's hard whatever but i do think that you can live in a world where even if it's once every couple months and things get away from you just send your laundry away. Like I really, it comes back clean and it comes back folded oh, and you can move on with your life. But I think laundry is one of those things that people like really sit with yes. and just like it they just feel the chair and it just keeps room. going. Yeah. Yeah. And you're like, I don't know what's that. And I, I, it's not really that expensive. This is something that I will say that I often will set a timer for is something like household chores that I mm -hmm. don't want to do that I dread. Like which, all of them. Definitely <laughs> laundry would be one of mine. I, I don't mind. It's it's the folding, the putting away. Of it's the, the laundry. putting away oh, yeah. for yeah. some reason. I, don't know. I actually kind of like folding. Yeah, it's it's so ridiculous. But I will often set a timer and I'm like, okay, I have 30 minutes and I got to knock through all this. And so then I will put the headphones in and just go. And then I'm like, oh, that wasn't that bad. Same thing with the unloading. If you know this struggle of like you have loaded your dishwasher, mm -hmm. you have run your dishwasher. And now you have to unload it. And I don't know about y'all, but for me, it'll be like three days. And I'm like, oh my gosh, just unload it. They're clean. <laughs> and often I will be taking a plate out of my dishwasher. Sure. Because I'm like, well, then I don't have to put it away. <laughs> you I'm, could, I mean, uh, you could live out of your, di your dishwasher. You could. You and, should. It's a and, great idea. And then you just kind of keep cycling yeah. and it's washing. It's not a good plan. I mean, it's no, not. But it is like set a timer for 10 minutes and you realize, oh, it doesn't take long at all. Yeah, 100%. Like so you have four children. I do. I am doing laundry every day at this point, mm -hmm. every morning in a cycle. We have a whatever. It's the only way we could possibly do it. Yeah. Uh, but I think if I were living by myself, I think I still might. I, Sunday, I Sunday Because if you're day. doing, if you're like working out, like... Or maybe even maybe two days. I just think that I'd rather just like be able to wash and fold, do like the small thing yeah. on the dish on the washing machine, yeah. rather than if I wait a week, yeah, 
I'm like hating myself. Well, I actually thought about this yesterday because I there you go. D- did this midweek. I did a load of laundry, which I normally wait. Like Sunday is my day to do mm-hmm. all my house chores. And this week, for whatever reason, I did a load in the middle of the week that was small. And yesterday I had like half a load to do. And I was like, oh, this is like easy. This yeah. took me like five seconds yeah. to It's emotionally much yes. easier to So do. I think you're right. You're onto something. We, we have to do laundry like every three days. Yeah. What? I'm surprised it's not more. Yeah. What? You've got... Every two, three days. is just... What? Yeah. That seems low. We do laundry every day. And sometimes I go, really? what? Yeah. You know, if Miles has got... Uh, he's, he had practice after school. So now he's got two things. I worked out. I've got yeah. two things. The baby's gone through 17 now. It's true. That day. Yeah. Your kid, your, your son is older. So I have like, yeah. a, at the time of this recording, I have a seven year old and a five year old that they're not like super dirty yet. And they're not outside yet. It's not summer yet. Sure. So we'll go through. Yeah. More summer. Yeah, that's interesting. Be, that's a yeah. Uh, not sure. going through many towels, going to the pool. You're doing. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. oh man. That's okay. good. There's a yeah. lot of good hacks here. There's a lot of good hacks. I feel like I learned a lot. So here's my, my big takeaway for all of you as you're listening to it, right? Whenever you hear a podcast like this, just take one of these things and try yeah. to execute on it, right? You'd be like, oh, that's so many fun productivity hacks. But it's like, no, no, just pick one and start adding it to your list. Like a timer, multiple people said that. That might be the yeah. thing you need to just shorten your time, right? Or right. get off social media. I remember when I was in high school, I would do homework while the TV was on. Oh, for sure. Right. Maybe you need to turn off like all those types of distractions. Totally. Get cold turkey or what was the one that you just said? Opal. Opal, right? Yeah. And just get social media or block it. Block it, right? Or some people I know it was like sports websites that they just get consumed mm-hmm. by. Yeah. Um, that's the stuff that you want to get rid of so that you can get focused on things you need to get done. Yes. So I used to listen to a show and I don't, I didn't stop listening out of some principle. I just, life is busy called the slate culture gab fest. And at the end of every episode, they would do things are making us happy this week. And so I'd like to do something similar. We can come up with a name later, but what is something productivity or not just for our dear beloved community that is bringing you joy uh, in your life this week or the last couple of weeks. So I had this, let me give you context. Okay. I, at the beginning of the year, thought I'm only going to read five books that I've read before and just like do a deep dive in them. Oh. And I started doing it, but I realized there there was so many other books that I just (laughs) wanted to read. Sure. Uh, So I like, I was trying to stay committed to that goal. I'm Mm -hmm. like, I'm just going to deep dive into it. And I found that I just got really bored really fast. Mm -hmm. So I needed to like tease myself and go read other books. So I started reading other books. Right. Yeah. Uh, so one of the books right now is called Get Scalable, and it's all about scaling and building systems and, and operations. Oh, cool. mm. uh, and if most of you don't know this, but I used to oversee a lot of operations in my career and like my heart came alive again. I was like, oh, oh no. I thought about like different systems for full focus. And I've been talking to Megan about it. I'm like, oh, we cool. could do this, 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 this. My brain just works in systems. Yeah. So uh, that's been kind of fun for, for mm. work. And it's also just helped me think about personal life too like oh what systems can i start building yeah. for my family so that we could move forward in an easier way while we have four little kids in the house sure nice. so get back to that yeah your standard operating right yeah for for standard operating procedure for some reason i just kind of like stopped doing it i was just like i just blocked well you all got sick we we all got sick yeah, yeah. for but two I, months i think too <laughs> like some, something about my roles here, like yeah. I haven't had an operations role. So all of a sudden it just like, I turned all that off. Oh. Yeah, it just got reignited. It, so like reading this book kind of yeah. got me fired up all over again. I'm like, oh, there are stuff that I see that we could yeah. be adding or implementing. Hmm. Oh, I'm excited to hear more about that. Yeah. That's awesome. Be fun. That's great. What about you? Okay. So mine is very, <laughs> oh, not, <I> forgot. <laughs> not related to work in the least. Um, but I, this was actually several months ago, like last fall, one of my sisters introduced the rest of us sisters to something that is called like your color season. And so you can get, there's a Nick is like, what is this? Well, this, this I've been started by pre it. episode. <laughs> I said something. Yeah. So I've been waiting to see what we're talking about. So there's essentially colors that look better on you 
than other colors do, right? Mm-hmm. Like we all yeah. kind of know this. But based on the undertones of your skin and I, the contrast between your skin, your hair, and your eyes, that will determine which season. So like you could be in autumn, you could be a spring, summer, winter. And then within those, there's kind of subsets of, um, you know. Do like, you know what you are, Ken? Are you about to tell us yeah. what Ken is? Well, I, I know. know. I'm not like super skilled and there's all, there's all kinds of stuff that goes in this. You can hire you get, like, certified. Yeah, like, you can like hire, oh. people, which we did like a kind of like party as a family where we had these women come and they like drape all these different color swatches on you. I have seen now that you're saying this and it is crazy. Like I was like, this is not that big of a deal. And then y'all who are listening can't see, but I have a blue, um, shirt well, you got to watch on YouTube. Light you got to watch on blue. YouTube yep. and how this came up is the guys before were like, Oh, like that shirt makes your eyes really pop. And it's because I'm wearing one of my colors. Mm. I am a summer. And what's cool is when you do these consults, they literally give you, if you're watching the video, <laughs> she brings it with her fans <laughs> that show you every single color within your palette. And so I went shopping this weekend. We have a video shoot coming up for a course. And so I needed to go get some new tops and stuff for this. And it was amazing because I brought this with me. Huh. And so I'm able to just easily walk up to a color and be like, is that in my palette or not? And now I know, like, black is not in my palette. That hmm. was something that I, it, before I got this consult, I probably had 80% of my wardrobe was black. And hmm. I'm like, oh, I actually look better in, like, a, a navy would be a good neutral or a chocolate brown. And when I wear those, I look so much better. I look more vibrant. My skin just looks healthier. Uh, my eyes pop more than if I wear black so you can get there's an app that oh. you can do this that will like scan your face and will tell you your season um it is called style dna and it is kind of a clunky app i'll tell you right now <laughs> yeah and i had to find a different one you did find oh a different interesting one? i did because for guys for some reason they're like oh we're not ready for you guys yet or something yeah. something well, weird <laughs> well they they recommend like clothes and makeup and all that kind yeah, of yeah. stuff and um, but what are you? Uh, I am a deep autumn. Autumn. So yeah. they were. So for instance, his, he would be like in, you know, like olive greens or mm. uh, like oranges, pumpkin, like deep, deep colors, like pumpkin Rich colors. Um, versus like for me, the number one color I need to stay away from is orange at all cost. Like it is the worst color for <laughs> or, me. Or else. Or, or no. else, you know, um, you have a lot of like yellow undertones in your clothes, like your greens, like an olive green would be, have like a yellow yeah. undertone. My greens have a blue undertone. So think of something more mm. like a teal or so, so it's like the nuance stuff. But anyway, she's a pro. I'm loving so you, it. She, and it makes shopping so easy because you're immediately like, oh, that's cute. And then it's like, well, it's not in my color palette. Next. OK, I have so. to tell you, the first time I got introduced to this was because. <laughs> I was texting Megan and Marissa about something. I don't even remember what it was. Shirts. Not you, related. You sent us some shirts and you were like, do you like these? Oh. And I was like, those aren't in your color palette or something. Oh, yeah. She, yeah. yeah. But this was like back in like a, almost a yeah. year ago. I was like, hey, I'm thinking about this. And they're like, no, no, no. What's your color palette? I'm like, dude, <laughs> do, do I look like someone who would look at their color palette? Uh, it's a great I, hack. So, just, But do you feel more confident buying clothes now? I do. Okay. Well, there you go. It's easier That's, because, again, like you can. I also have a designer. So, yeah, <laughs> Bentley. A stylist, Bentley Caldwell. A stylist. stylist. Uh, sorry, Bentley. Uh, Bentley, he is phenomenal, yeah. right? So, he kind of helps just make me look good. But it's great because, like, for instance, yesterday I was at a shop and there was a yellow colored, like, I don't know, sweatshirt. And I was like, oh, is that like in mine? Because yellow can be really tricky for me. This is the only yellow I get, <laughs> which is like very specific. Yeah. And so it wasn't. It actually was oh, shocking. I didn't. It's a very pretty it, yellow. But I was like, I would. Ne- this is a color that I would never have chosen yeah. for myself. Um, same with like the shirt I'm wearing. Like I was not used to wearing a lot of the colors that I've been wearing lately. And mm. every time I do, people are like, "Wow, you look so great in that." So. Wow, this is amazing. Uh, you so can these look are- up if you want to get a, a console. The company is called House of Color. Does that have a U in it? Is that what I saw? Yes, color with a U. So, so it's like fancy. the British version. It's, it's fancy. a British company. Yeah. Um, I'm more, they it's, do, it's funnier that you actually have this with you. We didn't plan on no, doing this segment. No, but I keep it in my purse. But she keeps it yeah, in her she purse. Yeah, got it. It's the same thing with online shopping. I can like easily pull this up and be like, is that the right color or not? So you can get these fans also on Amazon. If you know your palette, you can just buy it. But 
if you do yeah. the consult, they get What's that? So. Usually when I, when I propose these segments, I'm trying to say something. It's <laughs> like, it's like the power of like the bureaucracy in action where you go like, <laughs> uh, but I didn't actually have something in mind, but I will say I told these two before the show started that I, uh, accomplished a Q2 goal Ooh, in like you, two and a half months into Q1, impressed. which was related to my screen time. So I had this, I said, we talked about this. This episode came out today, actually, as we record this. <laughs> I was talking about these these actions I was taking to try to cut down on my screen time yep. because, right. you know, I was sort of passively ending up in the, like, five and a half hour range, like, easily on my phone. Yep. And I'm like, I don't have time for that. Right. Some of that was in, inflated, but, uh, and my goal was to get down to under two hours by somewhere in Q2, I can't remember what it was. Uh, and so now I'm under two hours. And according Wait, to how, o- did, how did you do this? But according to Opal, which is a key thing. Okay. So screen time on your phone is like anytime your phone is on, it's counting right. against you. Opal allows you to set, for example, I drove to Nashville. So you can tell Opal, if I'm in Google Maps, don't count don't that. Count and that has been super helpful. If I'm okay. in Google Maps, if I'm in Slack, for example, yeah. don't count that. Okay. I, that's work. If I'm in, if I'm on the phone, don't count that. So I've been able to do that. So then just being able, I, it's been really funny. It's been very artificial to go like, I can't go on my phone right now. Sometimes I'll ask Ashley, like, can you look this up for me? <laughs> and she, and, and I, I know that it's not real, Yeah. but I have found myself feeling a lot of like, oh, I'm, a, I've been on my phone too long, which has been very good yeah. because otherwise passively I can be on name your social media, name whatever totally. for 40 minutes. The worst to me is when you're watching a TV show and you're yeah. on your phone and then you're like, what am I doing well, right now? Well, so much of my time. Yeah, you're just trying to like. So two things. So much of my time has come back is that I'm not doing the double screen like at all. Yeah. Like I, if I'm watching television, I'm not on my phone. Right. That has got, that's probably an hour a day yeah. of, of, you know, whatever. Not that I have that much time to watch television. But then the other thing is I got, and I can't believe I did this because I was swore I would never do it, is that I got YouTube premium. Oh. Which sounds counterintuitive. Right. But I listened to a lot of YouTube. And so I was having my phone on for hours. And then when your phone's on, it just encourages you to do other things. Yeah. Yeah. So the fact that if I'm like going to be doing laundry or dishes or cleaning or whatever, and my phone is charging and away or whatever, and the screen's off or whatever, it really... These small adjustments. This morning, I traveled here. I was sleeping in a room with a one-year-old. I was like, I cannot move my body <laughs> because I don't know what's going to happen. And so I was like, I'm going to consciously, I'm awake. I need this baby sleep. I'm going to be on my phone. And I was on my phone for like a half hour. But it felt very deliberate. Yeah, yeah. it was intentional. As opposed to, I really, I'm like a little shocked in the last couple months. And I know everyone like around me is like sick of me talking about this. But Opal will tell you how many years of your life you have gotten back. Oh, I love these kind of stats. You know, and some people that's very scary. But it's like you were on track to spend 34 years of your life on your phone. Oh, my gosh. If you, you know. Don't tell my wife. (laughs) I did. But, you know, you've saved this amount of. She's going to make me, like, download it today. Even two hours a day on your phone. Do you have to pay for Opal? Yeah, I don't remember. But it's worth it me you know and i understood you i understand you could just say like i have this you don't need opal right but it is easier to yeah it's great uh you know get it going back and saying two hours a day for a week that's 14 hours a week that's a lot but i'm saying that's a lot of time even now i'm going how can i cut down right on this it's a lot of time i try to do reduce my um screen time and then i realized it was counting my dating apps well, you social could put, media. Well, you could put that in. That was, just... I was specifically trying to get rid of like social media scrolling. And I was like, this is counterintuitive because like I'm trying to get myself out there mm-hmm. and I'm trying to cut down and it's counting it against me. So yeah. You get the Opal as a trial yeah, yeah, okay. on it. You put it in there. Okay. But I'm, it feels, it feels good. And I do feel better than everybody. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, so well, I, now I, it, Opal says you are the top 11% of people just like you this, you know, and I'm like, like, thanks yes, Opal. I am. Yeah. Finally somebody I am, <laughs> I am good. Yeah. I am better. I go through seasons where I just delete the apps yeah. off my phone. I'll sure. Go. Yeah, that definitely but this works. Is awesome. Amazing. This has been a blast. This is, this was a fun episode. I enjoyed this. I learned a lot and this was great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The more that I say it, 
<laughs> the truer it becomes. The truer it is. I really did learn a lot. So is this one just... Are we still recording? Yeah. Uh, yeah. We, gotta, we, gotta, we gotta wrap this up. up. Thanks for joining us on Focus on This. This is the most productive podcast on the internet. So please share it with your friends and be sure to join the Full Focus Planner community on Facebook so you can benefit from the creativity and encouragement of people chasing big goals just like you. We'll be here next week with another great episode. We're actually sharing our morning routines. So Ooh, is that don't miss week? it. Yeah. That'll be fun. All right. Well, until then, stay, stay focused. focused.